Well, the real estate agent told me I would basically have to pay $30,000 out of pocket to sell my property. He didn't think he had any other options. We realized that subject two was going to be the best course in action for him. After closing costs, you're into the deal, I don't know, under 10 grand, it sounds like. You take over tenants, no renovations needed, and you're cash flowing 500 bucks a month. Absolutely. Bro, you literally have followed everything to a T. Hey guys, I've got Joseph Marone with me today. We are going to be talking about a sub two deal that he did out of state. A lot of people don't think that you can do deals out of state when you're just starting in this business. So we're going to talk about his deal, how he did a no money down, no credit check, no credentials, meaning he didn't have to go to the bank. He didn't have to use any tax returns, bank statements, credit report, any of those types of things to get a property where the owner essentially hands the keys over to him. That's the beautiful thing about creative finance. These types of things happen all the time. And he gets to adopt or inherit is probably a better word for tenants that were already in place. So no renovation needed and no need to have an empty house when you first buy it, which a lot of times we buy properties subject to, and I turn around and I've got to find a tenant. Joseph inherited four of them. Joseph, what's up, brother? How you doing? Man, what's going on, Pace? How's everything going? It's good, man. I love that you got a good microphone. You you wouldn't believe how many people I have come on here that are like using their Android phone that has a dead battery on it, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. I love that you take it seriously. So Joseph, tell me about yourself, bro. You Have you been doing uh, creative deals since birth or like how did, the, how did this journey start, dude? So I started in yes. sub two about four months ago, believe it or mm -hmm. not. And that's real estate in general. I'm a maintenance engineer by trade. I just basically wanted to create a a pathway for my children, my family. And I knew I knew what I had to do to get there, you know, so I knew real estate was something that always intrigued me. So, you know, just going through like everybody else, you know, watching bigger pockets, podcasts, reading books. And then I realized, you know, I'm a, I got a full time job. So I didn't have that type of time to just sit there and read books and watch podcasts all the time. So I knew how to do something a little different. I came across your videos on YouTube. And right away, I connected with you. You know, you have like a special gift, a special talent on how to like teach people, per se. Once I, I saw your videos, I knew I had to get involved. I saw you mention about the sub two community, and that was something I wanted to be a part of. So as soon as I did that, you know, my life changed. You know, the community is pretty much the, the real benefit to all this, you know, meeting all these people, making all these connections. You know, you pretty much laid all out for us just to succeed. We just basically got to take the action at that point, right? So that's how my journey kind of started. It's interesting that I spend 50% of my time educating our sub two community on everything, right? Creative finance, raising money, corporate structures, partnerships, everything you can imagine in, inside a business. You know, even infinite banking, we're doing an infinite banking series right now. So I spend 50% of my time educating. The other 50% of my time, I am figuring out ways to, one, encourage you guys to connect with each other because this is a highly filtered community. And two, to manipulate you guys into connecting with each other because human beings, they think it's a stupid thing when you're like, oh yeah, your network is your net worth. They're like, okay, that sounds stupid. Like, just tell me what to do. It's like, no, dude, like, Community really is everything for us as human beings. We are a communal animal and we need other people to succeed. And that's a really hard thing to overcome, especially coming from being a maintenance engineer. It's like, no, I learned how to do my job. Put me in my desk. Tell me, tell me what to do. I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go home. Right. It's very much that type of mentality. I think we all grew up that way. What was it when you were a maintenance engineer like that got you at least listening and thinking about real estate? Was it a family member? It's like, you got to get into real estate. Was it just in passing, you heard people saying, I got rich because I flipped or something on TV. Like, what was your enticement to even start listening to Bigger Pockets in the first place? So, how my journey kind of started was I make pretty decent income, six figures. You know, I'm not complaining about that at all. I got, you know, it's a union job, good benefits. But, you know, me and my wife, we decided to start looking for our primary residence beginning of this year. And I live in SoCal, so you're pretty you're, you're aware of SoCal prices. It's outrageous, right? So we were looking for our house. We got approved, you know. But the problem was when we got the the loan officer when he was telling us how much our monthly payment was going to be, 
it was about forty six hundred dollars to five thousand a month. I knew wow. I could afford that, but I was going to basically be house broke. That's not going to work, right? It's not it's not a long term goal you want to have. I don't want to be struggling. So I knew I had to bring more income in. I had to find another way to get more passive income in. So, you know, I started searching around what I could do. I tried stocks for a little while. It wasn't for me. And I like I said, I always was intrigued by real estate. And I knew that was a, the next me best move. So that's how I kind of started when I when I first jumped into the mentorship. I was skeptical like everybody else. Right. You know, like you're like I had people telling me, nah, man, that sounds like a scam. Sounds like, you know, some Ponzi scheme. People were in my ear, but I, I just silenced them out and I just believed in you. I believed in the vision and I went with it, you know, and it's been it's been great so far. I love it. Thank you, brother. And I, and you've been in for four months, which is, you know, you barely even have gotten started, right? Because our community is forever and I treat our community like family. And so do you, right? I see, you know, you hanging out and becoming friends with people, almost like a second family, the family that you get to choose. So you didn't just come in, learn stuff from me. And then all of a sudden deals start f falling in your lap. Like there's something you had to do, right? So like, right. There's so many different ways and pathways inside of creative finance. Well, forget about it. like creative finance. We inside of sub two in our community, everybody's doing cash deals, flipping, wholesaling. People do all of those things as well. But you add creative finance to it. There's a thousand extra ways to make money and get your hands into a deal. Right. What was the thing that you started doing to take action? So what I started doing, first of all, was I started watching the Zero to Hero series. Mm. watching that classic bro watching how how the guys just pretty much put a game plan put a campaign together you know getting prop stream or batch leads you know getting getting a va cold calling getting an auto dialer i followed the blueprint down to a t that's basically what i did you know i built a team i i got prop stream then i i got call tools for my auto dialer I hired a VA and the VA store is, is kind of interesting because most people, they hire a VA through a uh, actual company. My VA actually reached out to me directly through Facebook Messenger. And I was kind of weary about that at first because I said, man, this might be some type of scam. But I tried it and I went with it. And it's been a blessing in disguise because she's been great. I didn't have to train her. Didn't have to do anything. She had four years experience, I touched up a little bit on her conversations with people. But other than that, it's been great. Basically, that's what we started doing. I started looking up lists, you know, low low equity lists, pre foreclosures, probates, divorce lists, and I started pulling them, skip tracing them. And what really helped me out was the Avatar series. The Avatar series was is crucial. You know that that video alone was like three to four hours long. I watched every single minute of that video, and I wanted to make sure. <laughs> Right in the beginning, I the feel first bad, dude. So bad. It's such a long series. I'm, I've, I'm even going to make it longer. I, I just hired a personality profile professional, right? That she's going to come through and actually add like five pages of information on each individual avatar, like who this person is, what their strengths are, you know, what budget they have, all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to turn it into a whole thick like manual that it's kind of like when you play a video game and you get like the video game manual, like step-by-step, step. here's the, you know, you turn the page and it's like, go here first, go do this, blah, 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 blah. Four hours is a long thing to watch. It is. <laughs> but it is so important. What was your avatar? I imagine it's direct to seller. Direct to seller visionary. Mm -hmm. So watching that series is, is crucial. And I'll tell you why, because like you said before, not everybody's meant to, to cold call. Not everybody's meant to jump on a phone call and have a conversation. So when you when you watch YouTube videos, you watch these gurus, a lot of people tell you you have to jump on a phone call and just start dialing. Well, when you find out that you're uncomfortable with that and it's not something, you know, that you see yourself doing right away, you're going to want to give up. You're going to say, hey, you know what? Real estate's not for me. So I think identifying what your avatar is, is is awesome. I, I thought that was a genius move on your part to do that video. So yeah, right away, I knew I was direct to seller visionary. I consider myself a closer as well. Yeah, I've met some awesome people in the community that have all different types of avatars and it's it's bizarre, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's interesting because even when I first started in real estate, you'd think, I mean, you and I are very similar. Our avatars are the same. Direct to seller, I prefer. I love having conversations with people. I love closing deals, which you do too. But I don't want to be the person on the phone cold calling, right? And so when you understand that there's actually a path for you, 
specific to your personality. And then you follow that person, that, that, ta- that, uh, path you go, Oh my gosh, like this is actually way easier than I thought because it's conducive and it's in alignment with who I am. I've talked to, as you can imagine, probably 10,000 plus people one-on-one over the last mm-hmm. nine, 10 years. And those conversations are always, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm like, no, you're not stuck. You just don't know your avatar. And I didn't learn that Joseph until like year seven teaching people. And I was like, why is it that some people figure it out off my teachings and other people don't? And then I realized I was doing what a lot of the other gurus were doing, which was get on the phone and cold call, get on the phone and cold call. I'm like, what about transaction coordinators? We got a transaction coordinator in top tier TC right now that's making 50 grand a month. And she originally thought she had to be out there cold calling leads and being a direct to seller visionary. She's like, that's literally the opposite of me. So Thanks for bringing that up, the avatar series. So you find your avatar, you follow the zero to hero program. It starts costing money, right? Like you're spending money on a VA, you're spending money on lists. So like this wasn't free for you to do. And so I like pointing that out because some people are like, how do I get started? I'm like, depends. Like Joseph's got a good budget, right? Like Joseph has a six figure job. He has some money that he can put into some marketing. He can throw the billboard up and say, hey, I'm going to buy your house, spend the money. So you guys started generating leads. Who's the person that's getting on the phone call with these sellers? So I'm the one that's getting on the on the phone call with the sellers. But I also have a partner that I'm JVing with right now. And we're just basically, I'm following your advice on that. You know, instead of becoming a partner right away and, and building a company together, we're, we're pretty much just dating at this point. So mm-hmm. we partnered up, my partner, me and Ash, and we jumped. He's also a director seller visionary. He's also an integrator. And we jump on these phone calls together. So my VA, she goes through this list. I'm at work while she's working eight hours a day. When I get home, I check the CRM. I see what uh, leads we need to call. And she even makes appointments for me. She'll say, hey, this person needs to be called at three o'clock. This person needs to be called at four o'clock. And then I'm jumping on the phone calls and I'm trying to convert these leads. I love this, dude. Like, I, I, You and I did not script this. Nope. But I'm telling you, you literally are following the game plan to a T. Like you watch the avatar series, you identify with the avatar, you then go, okay, this avatar follows what path? You find the path, which was zero to hero for that direct to seller visionary. You then go and do the big, one of the best things ever is you get an integrator, which is Ash, who is the opposite of your personality, not the, not a, a clone or a duplicate of you. And you are having success. You're finding track. I mean, bro, four months? <laughs> like you got to be so proud of yourself because of course you're not, you know, giving away millions of dollars to charity right now, you know, right. but that is definitely in your path because you guys, you found what you are going to be good at and you're going to compound those skills and those resources and, the, and those relationships by doing all this stuff. So you start getting, you get on the phone. I love that you're getting other people to set the appointments for you. So you don't have to think about it. Like visionaries, if they're not told exactly where to go, they'll just go out and start creating things and being squirrel, Absolutely. you know, type of thing. Absolutely. But you're sitting there getting home from work, doing this in your spare time, which I always advocate for. Go keep your job, take care of your family, which is what you're doing so greatly. Come home and work those extra two, three hours at nighttime instead of watching TV or sports or whatever else. And that's the sacrifice for you, right? You're, you're sacrificing for your family, which is awesome. You start getting on phone calls you, I imagine probably got a lot out of like the nightly dial and the daily dial, and maybe my seller calls that got you to a point where you could have these conversations about creative finance with these sellers, right? Absolutely. I've been jumping on the daily dial and just listening to these guys talk and, and practice and do role plays. With that being said, I had also had a great MSA, you know, member service advisor that you guys appointed to us. You know, Avery was my guy. He was great, you know, because about four or five weeks in, he said, look, dude, time to take the training wheels off. You know, you're ready to start taking it up another notch. And he's like, what's your biggest thing that you need to work on? And my biggest thing was objections. I wanted to master every single objection. That way I wasn't stuttering on the phone calls. I wasn't, you know, I just wanted to have a perfect layout and responses to these sellers. So what he did was he started coming up with objections and he would just hit me with them. And I'm not going to lie, you know, he, he kind of caught me on a couple of them and I, you know, I was stuttering a little bit. We started laughing together and he said, look, man, this is what's going to happen on a, on a phone call. So you need to practice this and, and get this down. And is, that's exactly what I did. 
just kept practicing because I think there's only like a total of nine, 10 objections that a seller can actually tell you, you know? So that was something I practiced and I overcame. So love it. So tell me about this deal. How did you guys get a hold of the seller? You know, what was the pain point of the seller and, and did they have objections? What was going on in their world? So the seller was, he's a veteran he had a VA loan and he moved out of state. So he was, he was living in Dallas, Texas, and he got restationed to Oklahoma. Now he's sitting here trying to manage this property out of state. He had just purchased the property a year ago. So he had no equity because the VA loan, he didn't have to put any money down. So he had, you know, basically had no equity in the property. So that was one of the lists that we pulled. And, you know, so when I got on the phone call with him, I just was kind of just having a conversation with him. And basically he was telling me, look, you know, I was like, hey, have you contacted a real estate agent? He's like, yes, I have. OK, how's that going? He goes, well, the real estate agent told me I would basically have to pay thirty thousand dollars out of pocket to sell my property. So I said, OK, have you considered selling to a cash buyer? He said, I have. And they've been coming about sixty to seventy thousand dollars lower than my what I owe on the mortgage. So he, he didn't think he had any other options. He just said, you know what, I'm just going to have to deal with this, manage this property out of, out of state. Uh, when I came in, you know, we, we realized that subject two was going to be the best course in action for him. So once I presented that to him, he had never heard of it. So I kind of broke down how subject two works and he loved it, you know, and, and right away he had his first objection was, well, I use a VA loan. I have entitlement. You know, how do I am I still going to be able to use this if I if I try to purchase a property in Oklahoma? Now, we I went on the government website and checked on the VA loan and see what his entitlement was in Oklahoma. And we came to conclusion that if he was going to get another loan out of state in Oklahoma, he was going to have to basically pay a 10 percent down payment and he could still use his VA loan. I had a guidance from a friend of mine in the community. I don't want to butcher his last name, but his name is Michael Manasakani. Yeah, he's Manasikani. genius. He's yeah. Master of mine student as well. Really great guy. The creative engineer, he likes mm -hmm. to call himself. Yes. So Michael, he actually made a video on this topic specifically. And that's what I loved about when you said go out and make 50 friends, because that was one thing I did right in the beginning. I made 50 friends and Mike was one of them. So I knew he had talked about VA loans previously. And when I first got hit with that objection, I didn't know really how to pivot around it. So I reached out to Michael and Michael basically said, watch this video. It'll break down everything. So I watched the video. I took notes and then I basically applied everything that he taught me in that video. And I overcame that objection for our seller. Now, the next uh, objection he had was, hey, how do I know you're going to make these payments every month on time? So then I, I explained to him, we use a third party loan servicing company. It automatically makes, you know, it pulls the money out of my account once a month. And it automatically makes a payment five to seven days prior to the due date on our behalf. And you will get an email. I will get an email every single month and it will say basically, hey, this mortgage has been paid. So once he found that out, he felt more comfortable with the deal. He said, all right, what do I sign? You know, and I basically, you know, I presented the contract and then I followed your other step. I was saying never do a deal without a transaction coordinator. Four months ago, I didn't even know what a transaction coordinator was. So. I went on. I had saw your video with Jennifer Cortez uh, when she just had started her company and I reached out to her. I love that like literally every step of the way, one, you followed instructions. Two, you relied on the community who all have their own avatars and their own specialties, right? Like you've got Michael, who's a creative engineer. You've got Jennifer Cortez, who's a transaction coordinator. You've got other people you're relying on the entire way. So you're like, I don't have to know everything. I just have to know the people who do know the thing I need. And so making 50 friends, when somebody joins sub two and they're like, what's the first most important thing I should do? I, my answer is find your avatar and then go fi find 50 friends and right. ask those friends what their avatar is. What are they focusing on? Because at some point you got to have a list and you go, okay, when I run into a problem or an objection or I run into a transaction problem or a, a VA problem or a entitlement problem or whatever it is, here's my list of 50 people I know that can help me. Dude, you like, it's almost like you just wrote this out for me. You know how many people actually just follow the instructions? 
they try and recreate the wheel because they they try and overcomplicate it but you just kept it simple dude i i love it so the de the deal okay i got i understand the motivation right the motivation is the seller's got a va loan he has no equity agent told him he's gonna have to come out of pocket sounds like a smart agent didn't want to take the listing cash offer wasn't going to work subject to i i wrote down never heard of subject to before right here we are basically going into 2024 the height of creative finance and there's sellers that are telling you right now i've never heard of subject to before right. it is in my mind the only current blue ocean of opportunity right the sellers have not been pitched you got a hold of the seller the seller never even heard of it the agent didn't bring it to him all these other wholesalers that are calling them did not bring it up to them one single time you're literally the only person that's talking to them about subject two which is a freaking superpower mm -hmm. this deals in texas from what you told me what is this deal to you is, are you gonna get you got this deal under contract are you gonna wholesale this deal are you gonna fix and flip it are you keeping this deal and if you are keeping it what's the strategy there and how, how much money are you gonna make okay so i'm a buy and hold type of guy so as i said i have a decent paying job and right now i'm just trying to generate more passive income so i'm buying and holding this property i'm holding on to it right now there's four tenants already in place and it's cash flowing. Why four tenants? Is it a multifamily deal or is it like a pad split type of thing? It's a quadplex. Mm. So it has it has four units. So right now it all the tenants are on a long term rental. Three tenants that are on a on a lease agreement, and there's one tenant that's on month to month. So right now the property with everything being paid, we pretty much pocket five hundred bucks a month with cash flow. Now, obviously there's more potential there to, to actually take this to the next level. So once these lease agreements are up, we're gonna start exploring other strategies. One of the strategies that we have been kind of looking at right now is the HUD VASH. Are you familiar with HUD VASH, Pace? No, I'm not. So HUD VASH is basically almost like a section eight for veterans. Mm. And I thought, what a great story, man. Like this is a, a veteran that owned this quadplex, VA loan, why not get this out to other veterans and help them out in the process? You know, because like you said, you know, it's great if we can purchase a house. That's great. But we're in the business of helping people. And that's what I want to portray when every time I come on these calls, I want to be the guy that's that solution finder for them. You know, even if I'm not your buyer, even if I don't buy your house, I want to figure out a solution for you. And I just thought, man, this is this would be a great story if I can get you know, a HUD VASH program going on this. And obviously it's, it makes a lot more income than a long-term rental. Wow. I've never heard of that. I love the story too, because of the VA turning this into a VA house that benefits VAs and just giving your seller, like paying homage to that seller, which is awesome. You're making $500 a month in free cash flow, which is amazing. In a couple of years, you'll probably be up closer to like 900 or a thousand after you raise the rent on all four units. Or maybe the HUD VASH program will actually amplify the rents. I don't know. Will it raise the rents? Yes, it will. And uh, actually, if once we if we raise the rents on the long term rental, it will be a cash flow of fifteen hundred bucks because we've already done the market research of the comps in the area for tenants. But yeah, we we saw that we would cash flow fifteen hundred with the HUD VASH. I'm not exactly sure how much more we can make on that, so I'm still doing some research on that. But it's something that we're currently looking into. I love it. So the seller basically handed the keys over to you. You gave him no money into his pocket. Right. And you ended up paying closing costs out of your pocket on a zero down deal. Right. After closing costs, you're into the deal. I don't know, under 10 grand. It sounds like you take over tenants, no renovations needed and your cash flowing 500 bucks a month. That's phenomenal. What city is this in? City of Dallas. You're in Dallas. I'm in SoCal. I live no, in California. I know, man, this deal. Oh, Bro, the, this yeah, is, the deal's in Dallas, yes. Now I'm pissed off you didn't freaking assign this deal to me, but I'm happy <laughs> that you got this cash flow, dude. This is awesome. Hey, man, I'm, I'm definitely going to bring a deal your way, Pace. Best believe that. Please, please, please. Well, anything that's a quadplex, keep those for yourself. That's a, This is a gold mine for you. I mean, this will make you and your partners a lot of money. So are you and Ash partnering on the ownership of this deal, or how's that structured? Yeah, we are. We have a JV agreement and we're 50-50. So all the costs for 
you know, our marketing, all the costs for, you know, closing costs, everything. We, we split down the middle 50, 50, and we own this, we own this, uh, 50, 50 basically. So, okay. I, I gotta just lay this out. Cause it's just, it, this is my life's calling, right? I heard Jeff Bezos said, he said, some people have a job, some people have a career, other people's other people are lucky enough to find their calling. And I feel like my calling was building community. And I look at this and I'm like, okay, you come in, you follow the avatar series. You then do the zero to hero series. You then find your partner in sub two, who's an integrator who also knew the, their avatar based on the avatar series. The 50 friends that you found in sub two helped you get the deal done. You leverage the daily dial and your MSA, your member success advisor, which I give to you guys, Avery pushed you and said, it's time to level things up. Let's master right. objections, right? Then you use the purchase and sell agreement and all the creative finance documents that we give you. Yes. You leverage a transaction coordinator who understood, understands creative finance because we train them, right? Right. You then also have a JV agreement, I imagine, that I also gave you and trained you guys on how to date each other rather than... Bro, you literally have followed everything to a T. Absolutely. Holy crap, dude. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. I'm so impressed by you. This is amazing. What What is the What is the future look like for Joseph? Like, are you going to continue to just stay on the exact same path? Are you expanding a little bit? Are you narrowing down because you found something you really like? What does the next six months look like for you? Well, the next six months is let's go and get 10 more of these. You know, I want to scale mm -hmm. as big as possible. You know, I want to keep bringing in more passive income, if, whether that's multifamily, whether it's single family homes, I'm open to it. Right now, the goal is, is just keep holding on to properties. And obviously, I'm not I'm not opposed to wholesaling. If I get a deal that doesn't make sense to hold on to, then I'll wholesale it. And then, you know, we get some more income coming in that way. But yeah, the, the goal is basically to just get as many properties as I can and get to a level like pace, you know, and get up to that level, brother. <laughs> Dude, it's so amazing. You know, I read something this morning, too, going back to the army, the military, there's a military phrase. I'm not of that, but there was a military phrase I read this morning. It said, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And going slow and just picking up 10 of these a year, 20 of these a year, and focusing on that one thing without saying, okay, I'm going to wholesale too. I'm going to fix and flip too. I'm going to do all these things too. And I'm going to do multifamily. It's like, bro, you've, you've done the one thing. You've got a fourplex already under contract. You've got a fourplex in your portfolio. It's making 500 bucks a month. Go do that again. Go do it again. Go do it again. You'll wake up in six months with 10 more of these things in your portfolio, $5,000 a month in, in net cash flow. And then another year later, you'll be at like $10,000, $12,000 a month in cash flow. And another year later, you'll be able to raise all your rent on all these properties. The compound effect of your first 24 months is scary. And dude, you're already on that journey, building that momentum, building these relationships. I'm so freaking impressed. So Thank freaking you. impressed. What, do you, what are you looking for in your business? What do you need more of? Do you need wholesalers to send you dead leads? Do you need the sub two community to bring you more opportunities? Do you need private capital? What do you feel like you need the most right now? So I've, I've slowly built a private money lenders list that I've connected with, with people in the community, but I'm always open to more private money lenders coming my way. Also. What I'm as I start to scale and expand, what I'm looking for is a dispo guy, someone that can just mm -hmm. focus primarily on dispo. And that would help out tremendously. That way we can keep this pipeline open, you know, just keep generating leads. I'm closing them, hand them off to dispo. Dispo does their thing. And then we just keep that conveyor belt going. That's what I'm trying to do. I love that. Okay. So how can people, I know people inside the community can get a hold of you easily through the Facebook group, but how can people outside in YouTube land get a hold of you? So they can also get a hold of me at Instagram. It's my name at Joseph Maroon. And also I have a YouTube channel and that's also mm. at, at Joseph Maroon. They can get a hold of me there. I freaking love that. Well, YouTube's hard to get a hold of people on guys. So what I would do is I would go subscribe to his YouTube channel, make a comment on one of his videos, and then go over to Instagram, take a screenshot of this video and DM him and just say, Hey, Joseph. Love to connect with you. Whether you're a private money lender, 
whether you're somebody looking to get recruited to a team or you're a dispo guy, you you know how to dispo. Here's the thing I already feel like you're not looking for. You're not looking for a guy who says, hey, I do dispo as a full-time business. You're looking to add somebody to your team yes. that has dispo experience. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, cool. So there's a big diff difference there, guys. So if you're reaching out and saying, hey, I can dispo your deals, I think Joseph would definitely look at you as an opportunity and somebody to JV with, but long-term, he wants somebody internal on his team to do those things for him. So, bro, this is... Awesome. I'm like, I look at all, look at all my notes. I literally filled an entire page of notes because I'm like, just constantly reminded about the basics and keeping it so simple. And you did a lot of work. Like think about what you had to do to educate yourself. Once you joined the community, you had to go learn new things you've never heard before, apply things that you've never applied before, do activities you've never had to do. How old are you right now? I'm 37 years old. Okay. So at 37, I can tell you I'm 40. So I'm just a couple of years ahead of you, but dude, what's crazy is the older we get, the harder it is for us to adopt new activities and new talents and skills. Like we kind of get set in our ways, especially somebody who's already making six figures. It's like, you could coast, right? Like your family should be proud of you already. Your wife should be proud of you already. Your, your family's like, our dad brings home the bacon. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get complacent and lazy in that. And you weren't, you got your freaking butt to work, dude. You got home from work and you got to work, right? You did your nine to five, but then you did your five to nine and you're starting to see the fruits of that. And it does not come without challenges. It does not come without self doubt. It does not come without sitting down there, getting ready to call a seller and having anxiety almost every time you make one of those phone calls. Am I right about that? Or are you just like impervious to that? No, man. When I jumped on these phone calls, I was nervous like everybody else. You know, I had butterflies. You know, you could hear it in my voice. Um, I was recording all these calls and I would go back and I would listen to them. And I said, damn, you know, why? Why did I sound? Why did I say this? Why did I sound like that? <laughs> and that was crucial, man, because I was able to take notes on myself and figure out what I needed to do to change and make myself sound better on the phone lines. But yeah, man, you, you pointed it out. You know, it's like I realized that I took the action. And I wasn't just sitting on the sidelines, but you laid out the blueprint. You laid out the foundation. I'm just following suit. That's all I'm doing here. And what one thing I want to quote on the on the community is that, you know, where I grew up out here, it's like everybody around you is is take, take, take. You know, it's like they have everybody has this mentality of how they can take from you. And when I joined this community, it was the complete opposite. Everybody was give, give, give. And I was astounded by that. I said, that, you know, like I said, it sounded like a Ponzi scheme. It sounded like, what's the catch, right? What, what is in it for these people that are just going to give me information, give me all these connections? What's in it for them? So when I realized that people just generally want to give because you give that vibe, you give, you teach people to change their mindset, you know, to give back to people. It makes me want to give now. And so with that being said, I want to I want to be a helpful person in the community. I want to be a go to guy and I want to be a leader. So whatever it takes to get to that level, I'm willing to put in the work to do that, you know, because I'm an action taker, man. Um, I'd rather go out swinging than, than to get caught looking. Right. So that's that's the mindset. Yeah, you're you're my you're my you're my kind of friend that's like you're out in the battlefield, bro. And, you know, other people are sitting on the bleachers watching you and I at battle and we enjoy the battle. In fact, yesterday I was at home. And my wife goes, hey, we're going to go to Dean Graziosi's um, child has a one-year uh, birthday party. You want to come? I was like, no, I don't want to like go to some other dude's like kid's birthday party. I, like, I don't think other dads are going to be there. So I'll hang back, right? I'll hang back. I don't want to like make it weird. Like all the kids should be there. Dads shouldn't be there. It should be like a mom and a kid thing, right? Right. And so I didn't, I didn't also, I, like I don't want to be in Dean's house making him feel like he has to entertain me and stuff like that, right? So I hung back and I had three hours to myself. And all I could think about was how do I help somebody in the community? How do I help somebody? I'm like, no, 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 relax, just relax. Just take, sit down on the couch for 15 minutes and just relax. And bro, I could not do it. It's like you and I are the same person in that regard. It's like, if I'm not taking action, that's where my anxiety comes from. People get anxiety thinking about taking action. You guys like you and guys like me, we get anxiety if we're not taking action. And Absolutely. So if you're out there listening to this episode, guys, and you want some help, you need somebody to 
call your leads. You need somebody to put your money into. Call Joseph, vet him, of course, right? Vet him and verify he's a legit guy. Ask him the address of the fourplex, you know? But dude, you inspired me, man. You just made my whole Sunday morning a thousand times better. I appreciate you. I love that. And I actually did do a deal breakdown, but I didn't include the settlement statement on there. But I guess I can always go back and edit and add that in. Yeah, I would always do that. I mean, there's always going to be somebody that watches you in the future that's like, oh, he's full of crap. He just said all these things. It's like, no, dude, here's the settlement statement. You can go pull this up. You can pull up the address and pull up public record and see that my LLC owns this thing. You know, I mean, you got to put out, put stuff out there that you want. But still, if you guys are out there and you want a place to put your money, you know, there, that's the other thing, too, is there's an avatar of people that just go, I don't want to do deals. I don't want to talk to sellers. I just want to put my money in Joseph's deals. And I want to be a partner with Joseph as he goes and scales his business. So whatever it is that you guys are in the avatar series, go plug in with Joseph and his partner, Ash. There's one more thing I wanted to kind of highlight. Uh, when I when I did this deal, when we were everything was smooth throughout the entire process. But towards the end, title company wanted to put my full name and Ash's full name on the deed, on the closing docs, even though we had an LLC and a holding company in place. So that was a huge objection, obviously, we had to overcome. So when I was, when I, I actually flew out to Dallas to close on this property, and when I was out there closing, there was a doing DFW deals uh, meetup, like local investors meetup. So when I, when I went to this meetup, the first guy I met was Don Rich. Don Rich is the owner of the title company out there. You might know him. Uh, Don Rich, I was kind of- I might know him. Don was like student number 75 who joined sub two three three and a half years ago. Him and I text probably once a month. Don Rich used to help out with the nightly dial, the daily dial, and he was a mastermind student. Yeah, Don Rich is very, very integrated in sub two. Very knowledgeable, awesome dude. So Don Rich, I was kind of explaining to him the process and, and the issues that we were facing. And he's like, dude, what are you talking about? Like we do because basically title company said by Dallas, uh, Texas laws that we had to put our name on the title. And um, I told this to Don. Don's laughing. He's like, what are they talking about? So he says, you know what? Go ahead and transfer everything over to us. We'll get this taken care of by next week. So obviously I'm out there. I didn't want to go that route because I just wanted to close there. But I said, is there another way? He says, you know what? Instead of you transferring to us, you know, I would love your business, but this is an easy fix. I said, what's the easy fix, Don? He says, all you need is a signing resolution document. And that way someone can sign from your company on your behalf. So I said, where do I get this signing resolution document? He goes, let me show you how easy this is. He pulls up his phone and he goes on chat GPT. He types in this, uh, question on chat GPT, bam, this thing spits out a signing resolution document. So I present this to Amanda. I say, Amanda, do you think this is going to work? She says, I don't know. We'll see. Let's send it to title and see what they said. We send it to title and title says, I've never seen a contract like this. I never seen an agreement like this. I need to have the underwriters look at this. Next day, she says, we're good to go. So I had, you know, someone from my team sign on my behalf. After that, problem solved. Now we have our LLCs on the closing docs instead of my name. But, you know, if I would have never learned from the community, never learned from you, I would have made that mistake. I would have had my name on this title right now. So I'm glad I, I watched the corporate structure on the in the vault. You know, that was another, I think, four or three hour video video that I was watching. And I just set up everything exactly like you said. I got the living trust. I got the holding company and I got two subsidiary LLCs underneath those. I'm telling you, Pace, I did everything to the blueprint, man. (laughs) You did. And even like all the way to Don Rich, you know, our community runs so deep. You know, we've been around for three and a half years and you've got guys like Don Rich who went from doing zero deals to now owns a title company. And I mean, look, look at his transformation in three and a half years. And you're on that same trajectory. And he sent me a text the other day and he's like, literally everything I have in my life is because of this community. And shout out to Don Rich. Shout out to Ash. Shout out to Jennifer Cortez. Shout out to Michael. Shout, shout out to everybody that was on this deal that made it happen. And shout out to you, bro, for taking action and being a bad. Super proud you, of you. Bro. And uh, look, look forward to seeing you rise and own your own title company. Thank you, brother.